PC died. Just uh, boots to this screen, and even if I try and get into the BIOS with the Dell and F2 buttons, doesn't work. Tried to disconnect everything that's external to the PC. No, no impact. So anyway, let's investigate. Oh, so I even tried the. If you have DisplayPort connected only, the PC will not boot. So I plugged in the HDMI cable, but it's still end up in the same screen. So took it out, and took the covers off. I'm just going to do a casual check and see if there's anything I can see visually that looks weirder. Might not be. But it's supposed to. So our next diagnostic step, remove extra cards, which in my case was network, a 10 gig network card and a USB extender card. And I got the same failure. And then second diagnostic step is to unplug all drives and take out uh, yeah, storage that's on the motherboard. And then I get this. So, not a completely dead system, so I'm going to plug in some drives and see when it starts to fail again. So, I plugged in the boot drive, it's that red cable, and it goes to SSD, some, some, and then I get this. Oh, I would say maybe possibly the boot drive has failed. So, plugged in the two mechanical drives and I get this. So, that's also not a problem. I think I'll put the yeah, drive back and then the cards and see what we can see. Anyway, put the cards back. It still booted, and then I tried a new uh, cable for the for the SSD, but didn't bring it to life. It's still dead. So unplug the SSD. Not gonna install USB for Windows. So. Ah, it comes in here. So. Oh. Come back with final comments after I've. Acquired a new <laughs> SSD. Oh, now I've got a new SSD. <clears throat> so I've opted to have an internal one. Um, I didn't have the standard SSDs. This one is a little bit faster. A bit, a bit more expensive than I would have liked to have paid, but yeah, that'll do. Let's get it screwed in. So oh, anyway, it's got it finally screwed in. Really not nice when they have that small screw at the end, but it's really difficult to get in. But anyway, let's see if it is recognized. Yeah, looks like it's found it. So I'm just going to um, package that up again and put it back where it belongs, and then I'm going to put Windows 11 Pro on that. And <laughs> do the boring process of installing the OS. Oh, well. I had to give up with the direct installation of Windows 11 Pro. I can't get past the this computer is not com compatible. <laughs> mm. So I went and uh, installed the original Windows 10 Pro. And I also installed the um, 10 gig uh, dual port NIC, and that went without a hitch on Windows 10s uh, compared to the issues I had on installing the driver on Windows 11. So I'm hoping this will actually port over now when I upgrade. So, let's see if I can actually get this thing upgraded to Windows 11. Now, I'm getting there with Windows 10 installed. I just uh, forgot one thing, of course. I should have um, downloaded the latest Windows 10 ISO image from Microsoft, because they update them every time they make, um, uh, not the minor updates, but let's say if they put a collection of updates, then they actually republish a ISO that actually includes those updates. So. Yeah, I've been using a USB stick that's been sitting around for <laughs> quite a few months, so I, sh I should have actually, as an afterthought, I should have gone and downloaded the latest ISO image. 
would have made the process a bit easier. Okay, so what we now see is a clean Windows 11 Pro installation. I had to actually um, delete the Windows 10 installation I made and struggled to get updated. <laughs> so anyway, I'll give some hints how I got here. Uh, I'll firstly visit the BIOS and advanced mode. And that's what to do with this boot configuration. So just leave this as usual, so no changes. But then I actually went in here and I disabled this. And what this means is that it will enable only secure boot. And then on the boot option one, I selected um, Windows Boot Manager for Samsung, which is the um, SSD M.2 drive I have installed. And um, that's it. That was the only way I could actually get this to... <clears throat> well, this is step one in the process of getting this stuff to work. Actually, I defaulted later to allow it to boot from a USB drive. That's, a, that's the first option. And I put the Windows Boot Manager as the second on the um, M.2 drive. So after selecting this one, uh, continue now. It was always getting this like your computer is incompatible. It's the secure boot that's the problem. But um, this stopped after I did the BIOS changes that I showed. Then I could, could get past this. So when I was here, then it's disk three is the M.2 drive. So that used to be represented as one disk three when I came in here the first time after installing the Windows 10. And then every time I clicked on it, it says, oh, you can't install it because it's the, uh, it's using master boot record and we need GPT um, boot records. And I deleted the <clears throat> partition on the, or I de used the delete function and, and it still complained about it. So it actually there, the problem is that it, on the disk three, it left a recovery partition which was some, which contained the master boot record. So um, I had to get rid of that. And then I was able to select disk three as the um, installation destination. So now let's have a look if I can, um, yeah, I can give a few hints how to get rid of that partition. Well, you can just cancel that window and then you can say repair the computer. So I'm not gonna do it because I've already done it, but you can, um, Use troubleshooting, and then you can go to the command prompt. Here I suggest you go to the system32 directory. And if you take directly exe files, then you find all these nice commands you can use and run in this session doing various things. And in this case, disk part is your friend. Just an example, like this is the list command. And as you see, it pops out quite a lot of help. Mm -hmm. For example, if you take help disks, then it'll give all the commands related to what you can handle with the disk. So, for example, if you take list disk, then you get this list here. And then here you can select like disk 3, and here you can list all the partitions on that disk. There, there was only one partition that was left, and that was the uh, recovery partition when I was working when this had Windows 10 on it. And basically, what you can do is you can make that partition active, and then you can delete it. And the, I suggest you, you can find it very easily if you just take help um, using the help command combined with the partition command and this command. And it's, it's, it's actually relatively intuitive to find the format to use <laughs> because I can't redo it because I've already, already done it. But this is how you get this far anyway. So after this, I think it's, you know, it doesn't create, doesn't require that much more imagination to actually um, activate the partition you want to get rid of and then just give the delete command. And then when you exit it just comes up to the main menu and then you can turn off your PC or whatever you want to do. Yep, and when you've uh, deleted the recovery partition then you can actually select the drive for as a destination drive for the Windows 11 installation and it 
automatically creates the correct um, boot partition type and other, as you saw, it creates actually four different partitions on the disk and then puts junk everywhere. So basically, basically then you end up with an empty disk that it can actually, the installer can actually handle. I don't really understand why Microsoft didn't make the install tool so that you could all, just delete all partitions or whatever, I don't know, some, some kind of weird reason. But anyway, now I have a working Windows 11 Pro. Yeah, with lots of setup work <laughs> required. Restore my applications and configurations and stuff. Well, that's life. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. See you in the next one.